Hey team, Grant Hagen here with Drone Deploy in uh, Dallas traffic today. We are actually on our way to a job site in downtown Dallas, uh, in the Arts District of downtown, if you've ever been in town here. Uh, I had a friend call me up, uh, he works for a general contractor down here, and uh, they just finished uh, kind of the exterior facade portion of uh, this 20-story kind of apartment high-rise, and was like, hey, can you show me a little bit about how this uh, facade and punch listing kind of workflow works uh, within Drone Deploy? I was like, yeah, sounds great. Uh, it's actually a replica of a uh, first tower that they did. So there's actually two towers down here. Uh, and I got to go visit kind of throughout the project uh, as they were building the second one. Uh, and he gave me a call back up today. Hey, come on back down uh, and show me kind of how this works. And so today we're going to be using the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Uh, and we actually are going to use the smart controller that comes with that drone uh, that has the Drone Deploy app in it. And we've already set up those flight plans for the facade mission and I'm sure we're gonna make some adjustments kind of once we get there, if uh, we need to make anything uh, and kind of last minute changes. So uh, I hope this is actually a really good opportunity for you guys to kind of see, I'll record my screen and you can kind of check out how this whole process works and uh, really just get an idea of how you could use this on your project. Uh, this You'll see this building, it's like an ideal scenario to do this facade inspection. I can actually see it here as we're pulling up into downtown. And um, yeah, just a really good opportunity to kind of see what this workflow looks like. Um, I personally, this is how I got into uh, using drones and drone deploy specifically was uh, doing inspections like this. And so uh, it's just really cool to kind of full circle and see uh, another really good opportunity to do that here. I personally think our facade inspection uh, feature that's in our platform is like second to none. It's really easy to use, super intuitive, really easy to set up. And now being on the Mavic 3 Enterprise, it's like even better. So uh, I'm gonna exit here. We're just a couple turns away from the job site here. I'll let you guys uh, tune in and look over my shoulder here once we get on site, but thanks for tuning in. We'll see you soon. All right, so welcome to the job. Uh, you can see behind me here, this is one of the buildings uh, that we're gonna be uh, inspecting today on the facade side of it. So uh, over here to the other side that you can't see in frame is the other building. So I just wanna kind of give you a little lay of the land before we actually go down. I'm actually on top of a parking garage right now uh, just to get a lay of the land and make sure I kind of know uh, spacing and, and heights and all that kind of stuff. So I, I came up here first just to really scope it out, make sure everything looked great. Uh, and was looking over kind of the flight plans before I go down and we'll uh, record down there just to kind of show you what this looks like. But this is the building itself. Um, you can see here, there's actually two buildings specifically. Uh, this one is the second of uh, these two. Uh, and I, I think I said earlier it was 20 stories, it's actually 27 stories. Uh, but the first thing I do whenever I go out to a job one, obviously going into the trailer, connecting with the folks that you uh, are wanting to discuss just different things with, uh, in particular for this one was the safety side of it. So uh, there's a tower crane out here on this job and there's also uh, just some different restrictions with uh, sight lines and really where we're gonna be able to see this thing fly. And so uh, you're gonna see here, this is actually uh, a document that I reference often, which is the crane height uh, and then also the building elevation height. Those are actually two really important things that we're gonna be putting into these flight plans. Uh, before we go up and actually start to fly the facades. And so uh, really having this, and luckily for the team, they had it right inside the trailer right when I walked in, so you can see here. And uh, this is really just something that I'm checking. And then also telling the project team, hey, uh, let's make sure the tower crane operator knows that there's a drone on site uh, in case he uh, or she needs to do anything to call that back down. So uh, pretty straightforward job though. Uh, you can kind of see pretty straightforward building, uh, really easy to do, uh, it's a perfect day. It's it's nice overcast and cloudy, so no really uh, shadows or reflections or things that we're gonna get uh, kind of tied up into. So I just wanted to kind of give you an idea up here before we go down there. So again, uh, the smart control or the Mavic 3 Enterprise is what we're gonna be using. Uh, I did put the RTK attachment on there. Uh, I don't think I had a RTK connection uh, up here, uh, but we probably will down when we get below uh, back to that internet source. And so. Uh, just great drone, it's a perfect day to fly. Uh, this is really just gonna be a pretty straightforward task. Uh, I'm not gonna daisy chain these missions together, uh, which is something that you can do if there's like efficiency built in, but uh, I'm just gonna do one by one by one. And then also what I'm gonna do is the overall flight, uh, or I'm sorry, the overall map of the site itself. Uh, we're gonna do that for when we get back in the office, when we kind of stitch this thing all together in one. Uh, you can really process facade missions really in two ways. One individually as just the facade, or you can process all those facades together with an overall map plan uh, if you really just want to get the whole building context uh, in its entirety. And so uh, that's why we are doing really five missions today. One, an overall map, and then obviously the four facades uh, from there. So uh, let's go downstairs, let's get started, and let's take off. All right, so we were just up there. You can't actually see it. It's right behind us here uh, in that parking garage. I just came down to the ground floor. You can see the building behind me here, but uh, I want to show you what it's going to look like on the screen. So 
Uh, we talked about the, the five really main flights that we're gonna do, uh, really just working down uh, one, two, three, four, five uh, through this list here that we already kind of set up. So the overall one, uh, which I talked about earlier, this is the overall site. Uh, and so you can see here, uh, really just what we want to do to get the capture of uh, these really two buildings. This, this one in particular, obviously, is the one that we're inspecting. You can kind of see it here a little bit uh, when we came out here earlier when they were doing the structure phase. But uh, that's the overall uh, site that we're going to do a little bit later. And then uh, really the facade, that's what we're going to get into here, which is the east face. Now, uh, I told you a little bit about uh, the tower crane height, the building height from that uh, image on the inside here. And then that's really what's indicative here to these key pieces of information that you're seeing on uh, the flight plan. Travel altitude, structure height, lowest altitude, and capture distance. Those are really the four main uh, numbers that we're working with. Travel altitude, that's the one that we want to keep below the tower crane, which in this case, this one is at... Uh, I think we said 360, 350, 360 inside. So we're gonna be well below that. Uh, the structure height is 300. The lowest altitude, basically the lowest height that we're gonna have off the ground is 30. Now I said the capture distance here from 40 uh, off the building. You can kind of see where that lands here too, which is just really nice to kind of visualize that here, but uh, everything else looks great. We're just gonna go ahead and run the uh, checklist here to be able to go ahead and take that off. The drone's sitting right behind me here. I don't know if you guys can see it. So, well, there you go, uh, down on the ground here, but we're just gonna go ahead and hit start pre-flight checklist. It's gonna tell us that connecting to the RTK network, we're actually not gonna use it here, uh, which is fine. Uh, it's not something that we're gonna be uh, needing that uh, access to. So once this is loaded up, everything looks good. I'm gonna zoom in here, make sure that's where it's gonna go. And I can obviously see the live feed here as well. So the drone's gonna initialize uh, right here on the ground and start to take off. Everything looks great. I'm actually going to flip over here to uh, this first person view. So it's going to go up to that first height. Again, that's the travel distance. That's the 320 feet that we had set. So it's going to go up to that altitude. You can actually see down here in the lower left hand corner what altitude it is at. I can see it right behind me here where it is at uh, up at the top. Uh, and then it's going to basically make sure and you can obviously see I'm in between the tower crane there uh, between the top of the building and then the lower uh, this is side of that crane. Now, this is the vertical view. Sorry, I didn't show you this a little bit earlier, but the vertical view is really what we're going to be showing here uh, to make sure that it's going to be capturing that whole facade. Now, uh, it's actually descending back down to that 30 feet that we had established earlier. And once it does that, uh, that's when it's going to start its zigzag pattern up the building. Uh, and so you can see here, it's actually coming down and starting to descend. Right here, off in the distance, it has gotten down to its altitude. And once it positions itself, that's when it's gonna to start to go from right to left, working up the building here. Uh, the video here is a little bit behind on my screen, I think because I'm recording the screen as well as actually operating this mission here, but I can actually see it off here in the distance. Again, it's working from right to left uh, and really capturing uh, the facade really in itself. And so this is a perfect spot to be able to watch. Here you go, you can see uh, kind of working from right to left here. Sorry that this is choppy, but it'll give you an idea of kind of what we're uh, wanting to do to capture this. now. Uh, you can see over here, it says it's about a six minutes for this facade. Uh, and I think that's actually pretty accurate to what we had originally kind of budgeted or thought. I was thinking it was gonna take about eight minutes to do uh, this mission or really for each different face here. Uh, and so it is truly just working its way up in uh, the building. And so once it gets up to the top, again, that's what it's going to go to that travel distance and then come back down. Now, if I wanted to, uh, and I mentioned this up above on the parking garage, I could go in here and add all those other missions. I would uh, I I'd recommend doing that if you want to save some time and if you feel comfortable about the travel distance and really no tower cranes uh, that are out here. If the tower crane was down, I would for sure uh, do all these, uh, probably two of them at a time. Obviously, I want to keep my eyes on uh, the drone itself. Uh, so here I can really get two faces of the building. Uh, so maybe I would daisy chain two of those together. And so uh, really with about eight minutes, a facade, which is amazing, uh, I'm going to actually be able to get two facades in one battery, even when I do come back and land it, if I don't want to daisy chain. So uh, really, again, that, that is a huge value add to using the flight controller, which is being able to daisy chain those together, uh, especially in the facade inspection. So we give you the ability to basically just make a line, not a poly line, uh, but you can make different lines. Uh, you can combine those basically two lines by daisy chaining them together. That's the really important part here. So again, if you want to do that, that's over here on the right hand side, which you can see the add button as well. So this is like somewhat of the boring part because this is just working right to left and up and down. And so 
I, I do just want to say though, I was telling one of my uh, friends here in the trailer, the, the days of doing this manually uh, is, it's, it's amazing to think how far we've come to truly be able to uh, set up this mission, have it go and operate and do its thing. Uh, it's just, I remember flying this manually uh, for so many years. And I remember when the Drone Deploy Flight app really uh, brought in facade uh, mission planning and executing it. I was like, this is amazing. Like th this is truly, I think one of the best features that we have on our platform, uh, because this is such a needed part uh, of the documentation process in the life cycle of construction. And really it's because uh, drones don't stop at dirt, right? Like I think a lot of people see the value in doing uh, earthwork quantification and quantity takeoffs on uh, that phase of construction. But this is a perfect example uh, of a job that's really needed to be documented uh, really before the subcontractor leaves in the punch list phase. And again, it is truly autonomously going and doing this capture uh, in a way that I remember very tangibly uh, doing uh, manually on my own uh, for many, many years before this. And so it's kind of fun just to sit back here and be like, oh man, this is uh, very, very simple, over simple uh, in a lot of ways. And so uh, I'm gonna let this thing go. Uh, we're gonna basically repeat this four or five different times. Uh, and really what I wanted to kind of do was show you guys what this looked like uh, to be able to get a glimpse of what it would be as if you were out here on this job doing this facade and special. So uh, get ready. The data part of this is I think what gets really exciting where you're gonna see uh, really all of this kind of pieces come together and really how this all kind of fits. But that is truly how you go in and uh, do a facade plan and a facade execution. Now, I forgot to mention this earlier, but you can actually plan that whole mission from the computer and then actually bring it out here to the controller on the job site over an internet connection. Now, that's kind of what I did in this case. I set it up uh, last night, just kind of knowing some of the parameters, and then I actually fine tuned it once I got out here, uh, checking out the garage, seeing kind of some of the distance and the parameters that I wanted to kind of set there. And so again, to be able to plan that on the computer or to really collaborate with, let's say, with your like quality manager or someone that's really wanting to inspect this and say, hey, here's the mission that I'm planning. Will you kind of like review this and look over this for me? Uh, that is a huge benefit, again, to be able to plan it on the computer bring it down to the device now on the smart controller, which is even better. Uh, and so hopefully you guys also see the value of what that is uh, with using the drone deployed flight app. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this thing finish. Uh, basically what I'm gonna do after this is really just move over to a different location. I won't record it because it's truly the same thing of what you're kind of seeing here. Uh, but all four of these sides will be captured. Uh, the overall map view will be captured and then we will go back into the office and kind of see what this looks like uh, so that you guys can kind of understand and put all the pieces together of what it looks like to plan, capture, and then go and actually upload and explore what all this data looks like together. So uh, I hope this was interesting. If you haven't seen the facade mission planning before, I uh, would highly encourage you to check it out. Uh, again, I forgot to mention, there is a simulator in the Drone Deploy app, both on the web and on the smart controller. And so if you want to uh, plan that out and really run through that simulator, uh, obviously it won't show you the first person view of what the camera's looking at because it is a simulator. But uh, just one thing to note is that if you wanna go through and really do this whole process before you come out on the site, you can truly do that. The simulator is a great tool uh, that really allows you to be able to do that uh, and be really confident in the capture of what you're doing before you come out here on site. So uh, basically this process times four around all four of those facades, uh, and then we will show you guys here what the data looks like uh, when we get back in the office and process this. All right, so we just wrapped up. I just finished up all four of those facades, uh, just like kind of what I was explaining, uh, gosh, what was it, 30 minutes ago? <laughs> when we uh, put all those flight plans together, I walked basically around the building just to make sure uh, I could see and check out all the different perspectives and really the distance away was what it needed to be and really uh, that everything, there was no obstructions. It really wouldn't encourage you to do these facade missions without keeping your eye on it. That's obviously the most important and safest thing. But I uh, just want to say we're wrapped up. Uh, we're going to head back into the office and take a look at some of this data, what that looks like. And so uh, stick with us here and let's go check out what we did. All right, so I realized I didn't talk about some of this uh, out on site and uh, driving home. I was thinking like, okay, what uh, what were some like best practices of facade inspections that like I would just encourage uh, a lot of folks to think about? 
Uh, the first and obvious one, well, I shouldn't say first and obvious. The first one that makes the, that is really just the most important to bring up is uh, when you are inspecting a glass facade, uh, the reconstruction of that facade can be really challenging, right? So uh, 3D uh, reconstruction, photogrammetry, what we do with those photos really relies on what is in those photos specifically. So the, the important thing to note is that uh, if you are doing a facade inspection on a glass facade, like all glass, uh, just note it can be really tricky to do that reconstruction. Now, there's some ways that you can uh, combat that and kind of um, uh, really plan against it by like going back a little bit farther from that facade and not being as so close. But uh, just note glass facades are a little bit more challenging. Uh, and, and again, there's immediate or there's remediations to some of those things and ways you can kind of approach it. But just note that's that's one of them for sure that stands out. Uh, I think the next thing too is uh, oftentimes uh, people associate facades with the 27 story buildings that we were at today, right? Uh, you can do facade inspections on anything. I've seen them on two story, three story, uh, you know, c concrete structures, steel structures, uh, tower structures. You can do them on really anything. Uh, and the fact that you can daisy chain those facade flights together gives you the creative ability to then go and kind of identify where you want the facade uh, really face to be that you want to inspect. And so uh, those are just a couple of best practices that, again, I was thinking like kind of driving home, like what are the questions that I hear a lot? Uh, and that is one of them was like, hey, are there any uh, types of material that are really tricky to inspect? Again, you can go and inspect it. It's the reconstruction of that uh, photos that we are taking today uh, and getting it into this model view that you'll see for kind of context and uh, really where that is at. But again, there's some things that we can do with that. Uh, and maybe I'll show you some examples to kind of like address what that looks like. Um, but that was just a big uh, best practice too. And I think the last one too, just before I pull in and we start to look at some of these photos is uh, really the biggest one is like facade missions just require another uh, level of safety uh, and thoughtfulness, uh, double checking, uh, just looking over. I think, you know, we get so used to flying mapping missions that, hey, we're two, three, 400 feet and we don't have any obstructions. We're all good to go. Things are great. Uh, and facades are just different. Uh, you're basically mapping the vertical face, right? So uh, there are just other challenges that come into play there that I just want to make sure some folks are aware that there, there for sure is an extra level of detail that you should go through um, and really getting yourself comfortable with flying them. I, I don't want to say like flying facades is an art, but it's something that you uh, will for sure become more and more comfortable with over time. And again, once you get that mission set in drone deploy, it's a, just a really a matter of rinse and repeat. So once you get uh, the altitude that you want and really like the distance away from the building, all those parameters, once you get them set, that's really all you need, right? Then you can kind of keep going and uh, really start to uh, branch off into the efficiencies that you've gained there to be able to say, hey, okay, uh, now we're good to go and really repeating this over different parts of the exterior facade being installed. I think that is like one of the biggest things that makes facade inspections really valuable is that you can start to do these inspections at different phases of even that exterior part of the life cycle, for example. You can do it in the framing stage. You can do it at the sheathing stage. You can do it at the waterproofing stage. Like there's all sorts of like sub parts to that exterior phase that as you start to refine that facade mission and you're doing it like over time repeatedly, uh, now you're really starting to be able to uh, get the efficiency gain there uh, and seeing like truly behind. What is the behind the sheathing? What is behind the waterproofing? What is behind the glazing? Uh, that's what really, I think, makes facade inspections so powerful is that when you do them on a repeated basis and uh, they're consistent in the aspect that you know exactly what it's going to capture because you've set up this repeated mission uh, over and over to do, that's what's really important. So I am <laughs> coming close uh, back to the office to be able to take a look at some of these. But again, I just wanted to kind of prep some of these of like, hey, these are some best practices of things that I remember uh, that uh, just are common questions that get brought up. So uh, all that to say, I'm pulling in here. Uh, and I hope some of these are helpful just to kind of think of and noodle about. Um, but let's go check out some of those photos and see what this looks like.